think. Hold on one second. OK, we will cut this off. It's not problem. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. And thank you, Arthur, for uh, hosting me. I'm very excited to talk here in this Berlin Power BI user group or Fabric user group. I'm going to talk about Data Factory and specifically about Data Flows Gen 2 and Data Pipelines. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fernando Calero. Let me try to move this. Uh, I live in Puebla, Mexico, near an active volcano. And if you click in this link, you can have some information because it's uh, uh, emitting volcanic ashes every once in a while. And it's interesting to live. And I live very near this volcano. I'm an independent, independent data analytics consultant, and I changed careers from finance and controlling, uh, where I worked a lot of time, mostly in the automotive industry, and changed to data. And uh, here I have some references, but then I have good news for you. That's it for slides. So now we are going to move to a live demo. But I have one more comment. And is that uh, I don't have uh, fabric capacity. I'm going to use a trial one. Therefore, I don't have copilot. But then let's uh, work with what we have. So we are going to start fresh with a new workspace. And then we are going to use the trial that I still have. And then within this blank empty workspace, let's uh, create a lake house. But then first, let me show this uh, persona view that you can change to the whole fabric and you can see here all the experiences or as we are used to, mostly me, to work with Power BI, you can still work here and then uh, uh, have uh, the different experiences from, from Power BI. So what I'm going to do is stay in Power BI. Let me control, control two, control two. Uh, I'm referring to this, this area on the bottom left. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to work here. Here, I'm going to create new and then more options. Here in more options, you see that you have all the experiences and the artifacts within each of those experiences. And we are going to work here in Data Factory with uh, Data Flows Gen 2 and Data Pipelines. So let's create first a lake house, which will be our data destination for our data uh, ingested with the data flow, with data flow Gen 2. So first, let's create a lake house. which will take just a couple of seconds. So here we are, and this is the Lake House Explorer, as you can see here. And um, we have tables and piles, but it's empty, and it's going to create our SQL endpoint in a couple of seconds. There it is. Okay, so. Now, uh, if we move back to our workspace, we could create a data flow Gen 2 from here, from Data Factory. If we do this, uh, it's a standard data flow, but with one condition that it will not have a data destination. But if we are within our that lake house, we click inside the lake house 
then we can see here, get data. And then if we click there, we can create a data flow, Gen2, within the lake house. And the, the convenience to do that is that all our queries will have by default this lake house as data destination. So it's here. There you go. Then let me just uh, quickly use uh, a query template to bring data, which is uh, the Contoso tables that we all know. So this is not an exercise to, to gather the data, but just work already with some data. So this is not important. It's a, a link that it uh, from Microsoft. It's in a GitHub repository, and they are very kind to provide it. I'm just going to connect as anonymous and have some data. So here we are. We have product raw. product category row, product subcategory row, customer, geography, date, employee, and store. Um, well, this is Power Query Online, the tool that we all know and love, and um, it's the same experience. Let me just make some quick uh, trans uh, groupings and transformations here. Let me group these tables as raw. And then let me move these others to dimension group. And then these two functions. All right. So uh, we have our table product wrong. And then what we are going to do is uh, to merge it with the um, product subcategory and category to be able to gather all this information in one single table. So we are going to merge queries as new, in this case, with uh, product subcategory. And then I'd like you to, to see this interesting uh, light bulb here, which is artificial intelligence or part of Copilot, I think, which will suggest to us the columns to make the link. And it's suggesting two, but the first one is the one we want, product subcategory key. We select it, we leave it as left outer and click OK. Then we need to expand and bring the columns of the table. The columns that we want are product sub category name and product category key. Now that we have product category key, we can of course change the name of this table to the the product. And then uh, let's combine product category row. So now what we are going to do is merge queries with product category. And then again, use this light bulb, <coughs> which is suggesting product category key, which is correct. We leave left outer, click OK. And then we expand. And from here, we need the product category name. That's it. Okay. So, so far, uh, we have our theme product table, uh, but it's not finished. But I'd like to ask you if you see something different in this query from the others. 
if uh, anyone would like to chat, uh, write in the chat, or maybe you raise a hand. What do you see different in this query DIM product from the others? Anyone? Uh, it's in italics instead of straight. Correct. Correct. In italics. And what's the meaning of it? If we go back to the first query, which is not in italics, and right click, what we see is enable staging. And then this is one of the differences from Data Flows Gen 1. Data Flows Gen 1, here they have enable loading. And then if you disable loading, you don't transfer this table to the semantic model. But here it looks similar, but it's completely different. Uh, if we go to the DIM product table and right click, it's already disabled. It's not enabled, as we can see here. It's not enabled. And then this doesn't have anything to do with loading because loading, as we can see at the bottom right of the screen, is the data destination already the lake house. So this query, this query is going to load and the others the same. As, as I mentioned, the when you build or create your data flow gen 2 within the lake house, the data destination by default it's, is that lake house. And you can check it if you hover over, you uh, see that the lake house is first the workspace and then the lake house and the update method, which in this case is replaced by default. Uh, but then when we made some uh, transformations in our query, like in the DIM product table, Microsoft automatically disabled the staging. But then uh, let me make a stop here, a pause, uh, to talk about staging in a few moments. And then imagine that you have to step uh, outside or answer the door or cook dinner or do whatever you want. Data flows into have auto save. If you just close it here, close it here, then they tell me, Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. So I didn't save and I didn't lose anything. So you go cook dinner and then come back open your data flow, and it's everything there. Our team product table, well, we just need to fix this configuration, which is anonymous, and everything is there. So this is a great advantage. I'm still not sure uh, what's the difference between autosave and publish later. If we click here on the arrow, Publish later. I'm still not sure. But here, what you saw is that you just close the data flow and it's auto saved. Well, now let's go back and talk a little bit about staging. Loading, as we see, even if it's disabled staging, like in this case. We have a data destination, which is our lake house. But then what does the staging mean? Staging is an internal table that it's created uh, to help to help with the compute. Let me show a document from Microsoft, which will help to understand.
So here, on top, we see staging enabled. We have our data source and um, the mashup engine is working uh, our transformations. And there is a staging lake house, uh, which is, is not uh, shown to the developer or to the user, but it's uh, helping to do the compute. And then we have the output destination. If we disable staging, like at the bottom, only the mashup engine will work. And then some other thing, uh, this part of the documentation is interesting because it changed a little bit. Because at the beginning, in advanced topics here, and I have the links, I can share them with you. It said here that Microsoft suggests that when you have already a lake house as data destination, uh, don't use staging. So right now, when it says here, it's an internal lake house only accessible by data flow itself. But here, when you are loading to a lake house, we Microsoft disable by default the staging feature to improve performance, meaning uh, here, uh, this lake house staging We already have one. Therefore, when we have a lake house as data destination, we have to disable staging. We don't need it. And that's what we are going to do. So we will disable staging for for all the queries. And I haven't found a way to do it in bulk. And of course, uh, functions don't have this uh, staging. If you take a look and right click, we don't have it. Okay, so this was uh, part of staging. Let me move this the product table to dimension. And then what about the row? I don't want them to be loaded in the lake house. So what shall I do? What I'm going to do is uh, delete the data destination uh, with this X. So here I'm going to remove the data destination. And now, as you see, there is no data destination for this query, which is the raw. And I'm going to do the same for all the raw queries that I have. I don't need them in, in my lake house at this point. Now they are not going to be uh, ingested in the lake house. For the rest, they all have this lake house destination, as you can see here. But then let's hover over and take a look again. We have the workspace, uh, the lake house, and the update method, which is append. Oh. Append. <laughs> I didn't ask for that. And the next employee is append. And the next is append. And the product is append. I think this is a bug because when I, uh, with autosave, when I close the, the data flow, all of the queries were replaced. I showed you. It's recorded. And now they changed. I don't need uh, the dimension tables to append. I want to replace. So I'm going to change it, go to settings, 
is gear. And then the lake house is the same. I click next. And then I choose the lake house, which is this one. The table name is the same. And then this use automatic settings is toggled, but still is a pen. That's weird for me. I'm going to untoggle it and see it's replaced. And that's correct. Uh, if I toggle and save settings, let me check theme date table. It's replace method. Well, that's what we want. But then let's take a look at the theme employee. It's a pen. That's what it says. Huh? So let's go to settings. Click next. Select our lake house. And leave it like that. Let's see what happens with the default. If I hover, now it's replaced again. Okay, but well, let me do quickly the same for store and product. And save settings and that brings it back to replace and finally the product. Next. Choose our lake house. Next. And save settings. Okay. Here we are. We have uh, our our dimension tables, but I said that the DIM product was not finished. Let me choose columns and uh, get rid of the product subcategory key and the product category key. And then if we take a look at our table, we have IDs and also have the the name for those columns. So I remove the IDs and then basically I, I'm happy with product. Let me do one more transformation quickly, which this is not the, the topic now, M and Power Query. Let me just do it quickly. Uh, let, let me combine uh, as new uh, Dim customer with the geography table and with the geography key, let's leave it left outer. And now let's rename this table as dim customer. Move it to dimension. Make sure that the data destination is, oh, it's a pen. Going to to post this because it shouldn't change to a pen because I didn't ask. The default is replace. We leave it at as default and now it's replace again. Uh, all right. So let me get the fact table quickly with this function. And as I mentioned, this is not uh, an exercise to gather the data, but have it in data flows already and then move it. Uh, let me create a group for this, which will be fact. And then rename sales. But the sales table we do want it as a pen. So right now it's a pen. Let's go to settings anyway.
and do the same, choose our lake house. And then let me show you, uh, when you untoggle, you, uh, all I showed you already, you can choose uh, the update methods. And for the fact sales table, we want to append and then uh, we save. And that's, that's the update method that we want. So we hover and we check that it's append. And um, I think uh, that would be it in this case for data flows. Um, let me do one more thing. Well, uh, for the team customer, let me just choose columns and remove customer customer key now, geography key. Uh, hold on, I need to expand tables. Sorry. And I want everything except the key. Now I can choose columns. and remove the geography key, and that's it. Let me go back to the DIM product table in advanced editor. And control A, control C, and then bring our friend Bing. So this is Bing, I choose copilot, and then I'm going to ask copilot, please, Add comments to this M code and change the steps name name to camel case with no space. Then paste the code. See what happens. Executing task. Certainly it says. And then I think it is a very good job. Let's go back. And then we have our code with comments and camel case names in the steps. And then the result is the same. If we hover here, we have our comments. And I think this is very neat because we don't need uh, chat GPT paid version. It's just free. Um, okay, so here let's, we can, uh, oh, Publish later, it's not allowing me. Okay, but uh, when you publish later, it's the same experience. You can just uh, go back to the workspace or to another artifact. I'm going to, one more thing. I'm going to remove the employee table. I don't need it. Oh, sorry. Delete. Delete template table. And then I'm going to publish. This is going to take about seven minutes. And as we don't have seven minutes, then let's go to workspaces and let's go to our demo two workspace where I did exactly the same. Uh, and I already published. And so after publishing, we have exactly the same. Uh, we have We go to the lake house. We refresh and see that we have our tables. Let's click on fact sales and uh, we see a preview of our data. Eventually. Here it is. I need a blank table 
And one way I came up to build it is with a notebook. I'm going to create a new notebook with Python. And then I'm going to say this is a markdown. Edit. <coughs> okay. This notebook creates a blank table. And as you don't want me to start typing, let me quickly copy this. Both. And run it. So what we are going to do with this code with starting session is just create a blank table. As you can see here, it's a uh, column one. This is a problem. I think it's up on line five. Maybe you just have to get rid of those weird characters and yes, retab it or something. Right. Let me. Okay. This is our. This is a tab, right? I think it's clear now. Just uh, having a table names measures with one column string type. And I would like to add all the measures in that column. If we click here, and if we refresh, we have our measures table, which is blank. So this is nice because the last time yeah. I had an error and the error was that uh, my notebook was not attached to a lake house. Okay, so we can go back to our lake house. Um, we have a notebook, let me change the name. Blank table notebook. All right. So here in the lake house, um, I think we are ready to create our semantic model. And then let me show you here. We are in this view of lake house. And if we create a new semantic model here, it had a, an error, but now it's fixed. Great. Uh, let's call it uh, Berlin model and choose all our tables, including measure. Confirm, and that's great. The bug that it had before, it made a, it it created an error, but then the solution was to move uh, instead of Lake House, go to the SQL analytics endpoint, and from there, we could create the semantic model, but they fixed it, apparently. So now we are creating our semantic model with these tables, and here it is. Um, and here, we can start building relationships, for example. And let's do that quickly. For example, we have customer and customer key. 
and this is a good practice. If I move from the fact to the dimension, the cardinality is correct, many to one. If you do it other, the other way around, the cardinality is wrong, and you need to fix it. So date, let's quickly build the relationship. Now for product. And lastly, for a store. Store. Here you go. And then let me. on select and then click pin related fields the top of card and then we have a better view and then I can collapse this uh, and I could start creating measures here for example in the measures table I could create a new measure for example number of rows equals count rows of fact Okay, but now uh, let's go back to our workspace and let's use an external tool to uh, that helps us to build that the semantic model. And then let me bring a tabular editor. In this case, is tabular editor two. And then, as you can see, it's empty. But then, in our workspace, if we go to workspace settings and in premium we go to the bottom we have our xml endpoint here we copy it go back to tabular editor and we paste it here and then uh, maybe i need to log in again no problem and then what we have we have our lake house and our semantic model here. And that's what we are going to choose. And then as you can see here, now you can see we have our model and we can use um, tabular editor as we all know. Let me go for example to the fact table and choose quantity, amount, quantity, amount for sales, discount, and returns, and then auto generate some some measures. But then let me go back to the measures table and create a folder. And then move these measures there. Safe. And then go back to our semantic model. Open data model. And if we take a look, we have our, our measures there. And then the beauty of this is that you can uh, use Power BI Desktop and then go to one lake data hub and connect with the semantic model which is hold on semantic model which is this one now we are connected live And we can, we or, or someone in our team can start building 
a beautiful report from, let me just add this, from this model, 21 million rows. And uh, if we go back to, to the semantic model, we see that we have direct lake. storage mode. Well, um, what do you think? Are there any questions? Uh, there have been some questions uh, during the session. Uh, I answered as well as I, I could because, uh, yeah, about the uh, lake house and the uh, behavior of data flow scan too. So far, quite nice how you use the different elements of fabric, like one for the, uh, the, the notebook for an empty table and tabula editor for, for the measures and everything so connected together. Yeah, but uh, Donald wants to say something. Yeah, sure. just going back to the whole disabling the staging thing. Mm -hmm. I, does, I think I read somewhere that that might have an impact on cost as well. If you know, as far as additional capacity units, if it has to build the staging tables. And I guess it's just something you'd have to just measure, I suppose. Have you heard anything about that? Oh, or um, no, but it's, uh, I heard some different stuff about that. Uh, even Microsoft said in, in some cases it uh, means better performance and in some cases yeah. it means uh, worse performance, which is quite, uh, still right. quite cryptic uh, to yeah. have it. Uh, and uh, I also found, but I don't have any, hmm, I lost my links, uh, my, my source, uh, source for this, but I have uh, like some, uh, also, good practice that uh, sometimes it's worse to activate it uh, yeah. um, to to persist this uh, all this query process, as uh, also like Khalil mentioned that or uh, Hashem uh, mentioned that it's uh, yeah with persisting the all this mashup is not uh, running all the time. Mm. But uh, yeah, of course, I think if you have like a staging lake house, even in, in the beginning days of fabric, it was even visible. So it's right. obviously an, another lake house with uh, storage, but the storage is like it's not really expensive in fabric. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not about storage. If, if you have terabytes of data, then yeah. you have to think about it, but then you yeah, need a clever solution anyway. So then, then maybe it matters. But yeah. of course, uh, compute is still more expensive than storage, right? So I would always opt in for persistence and uh, more storage costs to avoid yeah. compute costs. 